Welcome to the shooting show. This week we're both in Gloucestershire and Yorkshire. First we're at the Fallow Deer with Stuart Wilson, then we head north for the first day at the Pheasants on Burton Agnes Estate. Soon after dawn, estate stalkers Griff and John, accompanied by Stuart, aka Boy Blunder, head out to their respective positions. What we'll do, we'll just have a quick look up in this field. I'll drive up the hill, yeah. look in this field, see if there's anything there. Stuart will be foot stalking and hopefully moving deer to the guys in the high seats. Can you get cameras that have got the image stabilising built into them, Stuart? You can, but they're sh How are they? Is that a technical term, is it? Yeah, that's that's jargon that you wouldn't understand. Me, no. <laughs> John, Catman Birchill, is first out and, uh, shall we say, deftly ascends the high seat. Yeah, Whilst John gets comfy, Stuart is at the other side of the wood. The wind is being fickle, but the plan is to stalk through quietly and at the very least move deer towards John or Griff. Despite the adverse wind, Stuart maintains a careful approach, spying the open places between each pocket of woodland that are regularly crossed by the resident fallow deer. Nothing shows for Stuart, but it seems John's position may prove a better bet. John confirms death and drags the beast to the field margins for the Gralloch and vehicle recovery. Griff and Stuart are conspicuous by their absence and John will be on his own to sort out these two. Eventually Griff makes his way to John to load up the fallen fallow before collecting Stuart. It's back to the larder to complete the field dressing before hanging the beasts in the chiller and John lets us know that it's not all fun and looks forward to the next couple of outings with cautious optimism. We're a little bit under pressure to keep the numbers down, so that's the um, the main objective. Uh, and um, we'll see what happens later on and uh, and tomorrow. No. 
back out for the afternoon stalk and the boys once more deploy to different positions for the evening stalk. John explains his responsibilities, deer movements and the ambush plan. We try and keep the numbers down as low as possible on this particular area and um, we're under a little bit of pressure from the tenant farmers. It's all arable farmland so um, we had a couple of complaints over the summer so we're obviously trying to keep a balance but um, we do try and uh, keep the numbers down in the winter period as much as we can. What they tend to do is um, transit from one wood to another and we've got the piece of ground that's centred between those two areas so we get them when they're coming back in the in the morning and um, again in the evening when they're coming out of the woods. Once again Stuart is tasked with a foot stalking. He may get a shooting opportunity but as before moving the deer gently in the right direction is just as important. Stuart continually glasses the area, paying particular attention to the wood just through the hedge as it's a known hot spot. Persistence pays off as Stuart spots three fallow frolicking on the woodland edge. Then, true to form, Boy Blunder stealthily snaps a twig underfoot and the jig may be up. Cursing at his bad luck, Stuart can only watch the three fallow slink off in the wrong direction. The day draws to a close with a blank for both John and Stuart. We hope Griff has done better at the Muntjac. Next day sees the boys in position early and once more John is the first to see some action. Our cameraman is at the foot of the ladder here and it is his view we are watching. John is 20 feet above him looking down onto the deer. Doing the double seems to be habit forming where John's concerned. Golden Boy retrieves the fallen to do the necessaries. At least today John gets a little more assistance as Griff is soon on hand to help. Job done, it's back to the farm to ladder the deer and finish the weekend in time honoured fashion. Stuart rounds up the boy's success and his lack of in a spot in a manner as he can muster. We've unfortunately come to the end of a fantastic stalking weekend in Gloucestershire with my good friends John and Griff. Um, been very successful, been fairly lucky with the weather throughout. Wind problems occasionally messing up some of the stalks which has made it a little bit more difficult on, on small pockets of woodland. I did my Boy blunder impression and managed to spook three, ended up not dropping a single thing or even firing a shot in anger. Um, we've still managed to larder four fallow, a two row and three muntjac. So extremely enjoyable, very successful and can't wait to do it again. Stuart there trying to hide his disappointment and now the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. The global shooting industry is gearing up for the SHOT Show the biggest show of its kind anywhere in the world. The show, taking place at the Sands Expo and Convention Centre in Las Vegas, kicks off today and sees the biggest names in the industry reveal the new products they'll be releasing in 2014. 
We'll be at the show picking out all the hottest highlights and latest launches. Don't miss our SHOT Show special next week. Cartridge company Game Ball has been named as an official sponsor of the Clay Shooting Classic. Game Ball has supplied 10,000 white gold cartridges to the prize fund. Speaking to Clay Shooting magazine, Game Ball's Paul James said, We're extremely pleased that Game Ball will be the official cartridge sponsor of the 2014 Clay Shooting Classic. We will be at Windrush Shooting Ground throughout the event and are looking forward to meeting many of the shooters that use our cartridges. For more information, pick up the February issue of Clay Shooting out this week. Basque has stepped in to do a government-funded body's job for it as the debate over general licences continues. The Welsh general licences are normally published by Natural Resources Wales, but a technical error delayed their release. Basque then published the licences on the body's behalf. There were no changes to the Welsh general licence for 2014. The latest minutes from the Lead Ammunition Group have been published. They include a presentation about the risks to human health from the ingestion of lead and a discussion of how much lead-contaminated land there is in the UK. Crucially, the group has reached no conclusions as yet, but it did say it had seen sufficient evidence of potential risks to begin considering possible mitigation measures. A final report is expected to appear in early 2014. And finally, gamekeepers are seeking assurances that their jobs will not be affected by the Scottish land reform. Speaking ahead of a BBC documentary on land ownership, the SGA's Alex Hogg said rural workers such as gamekeepers, gillies and their families will be deeply worried at what the Scottish Government's land reform drive will mean for their livelihoods. It seems that the voice and the jobs of the working keepers are being forgotten in this debate. That was the Shooting Show News. We've been invited to film at the Burton Agnes estate shoot. Headkeeper Nessie sadly suffered a serious accident just as the birds were due to go to wood last August. His son Matthew has taken over the reins in the meantime and this is his first day in charge. Well, it was when I was, um, obviously my dad had his accident, so I, um, I was at Wycombe, so I basically I'd just come back to take over and carry on, you know, it's good work, really. And uh, a little bit nervous today, first yeah, day? Yeah, I was a little bit, yeah, because uh, I was worried that pheasants hadn't gone out to the game cross with it being you know, windy and wet, but um, yeah, what they had done, then, so quite good really. Yeah, I'll start again now. Good morning everybody, welcome to Merton Agnes. This is Matthew, our keeper, and Arthur is granddad. I've had the privilege of knowing the family for 50 years. Uh, you all know probably the story about David and why he's not here today. Matthew's turnover. I was with him on Tuesday and he, was, he said he'll be thinking about us all and he wished us all a good day uh, and he's going to keep in touch. Uh, and I just want to wish Matthew all the best for today. I've known him all his life and he's plagued me all my, all my life and I suppose he still will. <laughs> All I can say is have a good day and over to Matthew to say what he wants to say to you all. Right chaps, uh, there's no, no ground game, no foxes, um, I don't want to see anybody blowing, you know, blowing anything up, but then again I don't want to be here at, quite going to be here at dark night, so uh, best to use your common sense. There is nine guns and there will be, um, there'll be a back gun, there'll be a back gun here and there, so uh, just be careful please. And also, there's no great pastures. How much is that, man? As much as what you want. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Julian's looking after you as well. He'll put you out and he'll keep you around. So that's about all. Enjoy your day. Introduction complete. We load up and move out. The first drive the guns and beaters will be heading to is an artichoke game strip that should produce some high flyers back to the home wood. Matt's picked a good day for his first shoot and charge. It's cold, wet and windy. Inclement conditions will both test Matt's metal and the gun's shooting skills after the long close season rest. Straight away we're into the action with a few pheasants breaking cover early and flying as required over the line of guns. It's good news for our filming team too, who for once seem to have got themselves in the right place. 
we send one cameraman to follow the beaters and the other to stand with a line of guns as they take on the higher birds. The first drive ends with significant numbers in the bag already. The guns have even managed one or two incidentals, which they're keen to show off wherever they get the chance. You're all right, Dave. We're doing keeper's job for him. <laughs> no one seems to be put off by the increasingly heavy rain, least of all Matt. It seems if it's more the cameraman's metal being tested today as we head to the next maze drive. Drive number two is a very thick maze cover, and the beaters and dogs have to work slow and hard to push out the pheasants from this dense crop. A well-regimented line of guns and beaters is doing its job reliably, with the birds coming right over the line to be picked out by the nearest eager sportsman. As the second drive ends, it seems young keeper Matt has kept everybody happy, although our magpie-wielding friend still has a few kind words of advice. Smile, there's our camera. It's an organising bloody school, kids. <laughs> All right, John, after enjoying 11s and taking a moment to enjoy the fine Yorkshire weather, we head out for the next drive of the day. <laughs> Matt's beating team move on steadily through the trees. Only a lone shot breaks the silence and worryingly, all seems quiet now on the western pheasant front. The birds appear to be staying in cover and seem reluctant to fly into the rain. This carries its own particular set of difficulties. Matt ups the tempo, finally forcing the tight sitting birds to flush. Now things get going once more, some encouragement gets the birds out in numbers and gives the guns some serious sport. They're starting to fly well at last. Beaters, dogs and guns are working like a well-oiled machine, and even the weather has now lent us a hand. It stopped raining and hopefully it will stay that way to the day's end. Collecting the spoils, we waste no time in relocating once more and kicking off the final drive before dinner. Early indications indicate that the drive is holding many birds and should be a productive one. With birds flushing out in increasing numbers, this drive is shaping up to be a real cracker. Everything is coming together nicely. The guns, beaters and keeper are clearly enjoying the shooting day. Hey, 
We're not done yet on this bumper drive, which is bringing this fine day's shotgun sport to a suitable crescendo. It's time to update the running tally of pheasants for the day. The count is at around 90 and not far away from the booked 100 birds. We'd head off to a couple of outside drives to make a day of it and not bust the bag too early. By now the sun has come out and the birds don't seem as eager to fly so well, but the beaters skillfully push them into the breeze to curl better over the guns and a few more birds join the bag. Matt gets stuck in once more to provide the visiting guns with some final shots and round off what has been an impressive day for both guns and keeper. Shoot over, all that's left to do is admire an exciting day's bag and congratulate young Matt on a day that would make any keeper and his team proud of a job well done. Well that's it for this week, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been The Shooting Show.